we uh, start up today <coughs> with some fun with waves. Um, you will be given uh, some transport equation in the course, mm -hmm. investigated quite closely. Uh, we talk about the advection equation. <coughs> You're moving some signal either way. Uh, we'll have a peek into that one uh, today as well. But I will start with the linear one-dimensional wave equation. One-dimensional linear wave equation. <coughs> this is not uh, any important equation when it comes to the Navier-Stokes, but uh, it's quite uh, illustrative when it comes to uh, to a um, little bit stability, how to solve uh, complex problems in 2D and time. We start with 1D, <coughs> then you will have the double derivative, or maybe we write it like, now we can write it like this, double derivative of uh, u being a <coughs> actually a generic unknown, don't think of it as a velocity, could be uh, <coughs> displacement, um, could actually be anything, any physical quantity, equals, and then on the right hand side you will have a transport velocity, a wave velocity, which then is constant, so um, a0 squared, and then double derivative with respect to x. Write me a central space and time scheme for that one. Double derivative in space, you've seen. What about double derivative in time? Okay, we do the same thing. Central in time, central in, uh, in space. What should we call it? Uh, central time, central space uh, scheme. What then, uh, what do we get? Well, for uh, time I will use uh, superscript and for space I use subscript. So here, time derivative at a point i in space. You are going to need the new time level and it's double derivative, so now we have minus two times time level n and finally a time level n minus 1. So we have uh, three different time levels, phi delta t square equals, and on the other side you will have a0 squared double derivative in x. So here i plus 1, 2 times i plus ui minus 1 divided by delta x square. At what time level? should we choose here. Here I have a double derivative in time, double derivative in space, but what time level should we choose? It turns out that maybe the most intuitive is the best. So uh, it's possible here to do some analysis. Yes, you could have chosen here n minus 1, the old value, uh, the very old time level. You could have chosen n plus 1, then you have an implicit scheme. have to solve the uh, equation system for every new time level. But uh, no, they will be very hard to solve indeed. So we won't go through all the stability analysis here. So we just uh, choose this one, sort of uh, directly. If you think of it in uh, time and space, <coughs> Here you have time level n, here you have point i. What's your discretization star? What's, uh, what does the scheme look like? Well, in space you need three points to have a double derivative. In time you need three points. So there you have your five point discretization star. Now, how to program it? The wave equation, it's a hyperbolic equation. Uh, I'm not sure if you have gone through a hyperbolic, parabolic, elliptic, no. 
a little bit. So I mean, these names are just from uh, math, from cross section of a cone, so they don't physically mean anything. But yes, this is indeed a hyperbolic equation. The information is traveling with this velocity, a zero, either way, back and forth, in both uh, in both directions. So. To solve it, you're going to need initial conditions, have something to start with, time level zero or one or whatever, and then you're going to need boundary conditions. So when we want to program this one, we have to think in terms of marching the solution forward in time. This will be sort of the way of thinking in terms of finite difference. You pick one unknown and then throw everything else on the other side when we are talking explicit schemes. So here, of course, I'm focusing on the very new time level, n plus 1. This is my unknown. I assume I know everything from the previous history here. So I just write it on the form. u i n plus 1 equals. And then you throw everything else on the other side. What do we get? Well, you will have uh, something with uh, the center point at the previous time level. We have one here. Actually, we have two. And we have two here as well. Now, to isolate this one, we have to multiply up with delta t. And then we have a number here, reading something like, uh, oh, you can't see that one. Mm. Uh, I can write it here. <coughs> you have delta t multiplied with a velocity, which gives you a distance. And then we divide by the distance. So it's a dimensionless number. It's called a Cura number, which then we say equals to time step velocity by delta x. That's my c. And here I will have a c square in front of uh, these three. And this Cura number, uh, sort of from obvious reasons, should be smaller than 1. Why? Well, this is a distance. Something moving with this velocity during one single time step should not move longer than one single cell length. Because in my schemes here, I don't uh, take into account the next next cells, i plus 2 or i minus 2, they are, not, they are not here. Only the closest neighbors only move one cell length at one given time step. So Cura number should be smaller than 1. That's uh, actually not a stability criteria uh, per se, but, but uh, we sort of take it intuitively from the physics. Okay. So now, if we rewrite uh, this one, <coughs> the new one equals the old one, I have one here. Actually, I have uh, two when this one goes to the other side. And then I have something here, minus two times this c square. That's the coefficient for him. Then I have a couple of uh, neighbors in space. They have both the same coefficients, c square, u i plus 1, and plus u i minus 1, like that. And finally, I have a very old one here. He's sort of uh, alone by himself. So I say minus u i n minus 1. Here is my recipe, explicit expression, finding all the new ones based on the previous values, previous time step, and the very old time step. Any questions to that one? Let us try it. <coughs> So we start as always, um, new script, clear the memory, close all files, clear the command window, like that. I have to uh, define a region in space. 
So here I will do it around uh, zero, just to be difficult. So I choose a maximum space of, uh, say, 10. And then <coughs> I say my delta x is uh, 0 0.1 just use h. We are going to use two dimensions later on, so delta x equals delta y equals h. So uh, then <coughs> I can now create uh, my x vector, all the positions. Um, you can of course here write it as a, on a vector form, but linear space, that's uh, very nice to use. He divides up a region in space for you, uh, uniformly. And I'm now going from minus x max all the way up to x max, like that. And then you specify a number. If you don't say anything, I think you get 100. But uh, that's not so uh, sure that I want 100. So I say I want round of my uh, 2 times x max divided by h and then I need uh, one more plus one I think that one should be correct <coughs> plus one you go uh, between zeros so we have to count zero as well that should be uh, correct I think as for plotting purposes of course we need this x uh, vector and uh, how many do we have now so, uh, of course, here you could have hard-coded it, putting a correct number here directly, but I prefer to do it like this. And then I can later change just one parameter instead of have to rewrite the entire program. So now, finding automatically how many points do you have? Well, you have the length of the x vector. You can use size, but be careful with size. Size reports all dimensions for a, for a matrix. So x is a 1 by uh, the length. If you use length, you'll get actually the one-dimensional size of a vector which I need here. Then <coughs> my uh, variables, u. And uh, now I have a vector x already, so I just uh, initiate him like this. Uh, size of x multiplied with 0. That's an easy way. Or you could have written u equals zeros, parenthesis, 1 comma i max. That's also an option. We need some value for this uh, transport velocity. Choose him to be 1. Like that. And then we have to choose a delta t. And uh, now it's a stability uh, question, of course. So, uh, according to this uh, Cura number, should be smaller than 1. What will it be? Velocity is 1. I have an h of 0.1. So, choosing delta t of 0.1, then h should be uh, OK. We can uh, check it then. You write out this uh, value C. A0 multiplied with delta T divided by H. And then print it out in the command window. Just uh, to check it. Let's try it. <coughs> uh, we need a name, wave, one dimension. Yeah, so the QR number now is 1 with these values, okay? I need a maximum time. I have no idea. 100. So again, I have a space of 10, so it's really, uh, it's actually not uh, non-dimensionalized, but uh, I found that, that was a good number for this uh, visualization purposes. But uh, else, most of it is no, uh, about approximately normalized. Velocity is 1, so a time scale of around uh, 
10 should be uh, should be okay here. Well, we can actually start say plot x and then u just to see how it initially looks. So that's my initial state. I have nothing. Everything equal to 0 from minus 10 to 10. OK? Then, of course, we need the time loop. <coughs> so now we have to write something for time step n equals 1. And then we go all the way up to the, say, ceiling of t max divided by delta t. That should be the number time step needed. You could, of course, use round here, but then you might miss one to hit uh, t max exactly, depending on your choice of delta t, of course. <coughs> We are not actually ready to begin now. We well, we can try it. We see here what we are going to need. So, of course, for every time step, I then have to go through my uh, recipe for all my internal uh, points, and uh, I can't start with the first one. <coughs> first one has to belong to the boundary, and uh, so far we haven't said anything about the boundary. But uh, clearly, I can't uh, use him as an unknown, because then I'm going to address inside the wall here with i minus 1. So I start with point number 2. What about on the other end? Well, it's the same problem there as well. You can't really go into the wall unless you have uh, programmed it like that. So here, automatically now, if I just proceed without thinking, I have said velocities are zeros, and here I calculate from number two, but number one is zero, he's going to stay zero. And number i max is also zero, and he's going to stay zero. So I have fixed values on each end, so that is quite okay. Then we have our uh, recipe. How should we write it? Well, here we are in a trouble if we start doing something like this. Remember, it's an explicit uh, um, algorithm, so everything to the right should be just old values. So we say if I now just use u, then I can't overwrite it. This is going to be wrong. I have to use something else here. I need a new u. That's a new one time level n plus 1. So here I have to use a new one equals u. Then I have initiated him as well. Then we can start. We have the recipe here. The new equals the old one. Multiply with then we have this parenthesis here. It's uh, 2 minus 2 times big C square plus C square multiplied with, and then we should have these two neighbors. That is U I plus 1 plus u i minus 1, like that. And then we have the very, very old one. I don't have him. I don't have him. Here I'm now going to overwrite my unknowns as I march the solution forward in time. So now I have two separate uh, vectors. I'm going to need another one as well. What should we call him? Old u. Now I have three. I have u for time level n. I have new u for the new one. I have old for the time level n minus one. So here 
now I should have minus the old u mm, position i. There we have uh, the uh, recipe. Everybody agrees on that? One question. Yep. Don't you have to uh, initiate the i counter and the animals for Oh, thank you very much. Something is missing here. I also have something red here. Thank you. Uh, and the red says uh, usage might be invalid. I think you're right. Yeah. So here. Thank you. Like that. And then after you have now calculated all the new ones, then you can update all the different uh, matrices here, all the different vectors. So now we are sort of proceeding to the new uh, time level, meaning my, I have to start with the right order here, the old velocity equals from time level uh, n, and now u is going to be the new one. Then we should be uh, ready for the next time level. And here, of course, we just uh, make a plot. <coughs> um, maybe we should do it uh, more correctly. Well, we can try with plot and see what happens. XU. <coughs> And draw now and end. Something like that. So that I think should be uh, correct. Instead of thinking too much about it, we just try it. So now he says pause, press any key. So now he, do, uh, he is simulating and uh, nothing is of course happening because we haven't any disturbances, we have the trivial zero solution. It's a nice check actually, the first uh, test you do in, uh, in a program, find the dummy solution, see that it actually have everything uh, is a zero. And just to see that he actually is doing something, we can tell him to print out the time in the title. Time should then be numerical to string of, what will it be? N multiplied with delta T and say two digits accuracy. <coughs> then the time is running. Yeah. So uh, to make some action here now, we're going to need a disturbance. We have to need, uh, we're going to need a signal to start with. So uh, let us, uh, give him something. Say so before we begin we say uh, u of number whatever 37 equals um, what should we give him? We give him an amplitude a and up here I now say this amplitude is uh, 1. So now this is my initial uh, state, <coughs> and now let's see what happens. <coughs> well, that didn't look too good then, did it? Something is happening. But what? <coughs> He's actually keeping uh, the... Uh, the uh, the scale, but now we switched automatically minus one plus one, rather messy. So let's rephrase this a little bit. Um, what did I use? Actually, I went down to 0.25 on the amplitude, and then I told him to use an axis of from minus x max to plus x max, and then I gave him minus one 
to 1. Let's see if that helps a little bit. <coughs> there we have our initial disturbance. And then this doesn't look too convincing, does it? Let us try with uh, a little bit of different time step here. So now I have point 0.1. If we say point 0.11 go a little bit above ah clearly that was too much so now I have u values uh, fairly high so the solution explodes <coughs> so one uh, point one sorry it's uh, clearly on the limit but maybe we have to go down a little bit here let's say point five point zero five sorry yeah that looks a little bit better not that convincing though we can have a lot of noise which uh, I don't think should be there <coughs> Can we see some other uh, stability criteria here from uh, this uh, scheme? Well, the different coefficients. We have one negative coefficient here for this guy. That's uh, not so good. But we can look at him, the very old value, as a sort of a source term. So not a problem there. Here we have coefficient c for these two guys, or c squared, not a problem there. Here we might run into problems. But if c is uh, one or smaller, then he should be stable. But you see for yourself, it's uh, actually not that uh, stable at all. Mm, if we go even smaller time steps, one. Absolutely not good. So we are uh, having some, some difficulties here. And even smaller time steps. Still explodes. So the smaller the time step, the worse. What's going on? Something is fishy. But what? See, I think I have done it correctly, haven't I? Mm, we have plus and plus, and we have minus the old one, and we have uh, AOK. So no, actually, he should be uh, he should be there. He should be okay. Still, he is not. Of course, one problem here is the initial field, which is not so nice. You have one single spike, and uh, this, for a linear wave equation, you don't see surface waves like this so easily. So clearly, this is not a good uh, initial, say, disturbance. This one should be a nice cosine wave should be, be a harmonic waves or something like that would be much much better because this one he mm, absolutely have some problems describing it but if we now do this one a little bit differently instead of this uh, initial disturbance <coughs> we give him something else now I want to uh, give him a nice cosine, so uh, let's write it like this. If the time n multiplied with dt, if that one is smaller than 2 times pi, then we can make it fairly easy. Then I say u number 1 
should then equals my amplitude multiplied with, and then I say one minus cosine, and then I will have n multiplied with delta t in there. <coughs> Else, <coughs> we go back to the uh, Dirichlet condition, velocity equal to zero. So let's try this one instead. Everything is zero, and then we start running. Ah, that didn't work. Um, why not? Mm, ah, sorry. So, no, that should be correct. That was weird. I have an error, but I don't see it. Mm. Tricky, tricky. <coughs> okay, then we cheat. I can find the error afterwards. The same program should be the same, and it should look something like this. So there you have uh, the display condition on each end, zero and zero, after we have generated the initial wave, of course. And then you see he just travels back and forth. The uh, Amplitude sort of stays uh, constant. Uh, he, he doesn't grow in time. That would be sort of a hint of uh, wrong programming. The energy sort of is conserved. I mean, we don't have any losses in this uh, wave equation. And I believe the, yeah, I have the QRA number here of one half. If we go back to the limit, point 0.1, he should run, but now he's on the stability limit. So if you go a little bit higher, he will explode. So uh, the QRA number is clearly uh, a stability criteria for this one. Is very jumpy indeed. <coughs> now, if we want to change uh, the uh, boundary conditions, say uh, not to the left, to the left, I now have this initial disturbance and then afterwards the Dirichlet condition. But say uh, on the other side, I want derivative equal to zero. I want the Neumann condition. How can I do that? Well, should be uh, fairly uh, straightforward, <coughs> if I recall correctly. We have the last one. <coughs> Just write minus uh, two there, and then in the new u at point e max minus one will then be equal to, and then we have the same recipe, everything here, and substitute for this temp. Well, we can keep it as a temp. That's okay. Temp was for the uh, inner uh, points, just uh, the sum of these two uh, neighboring points, these two. But for the 
write the boundary condition now. I want the one here, i plus 1. I don't have him anymore. He should now be equal to the one called ui. So by simply saying ui, I just say this guy equals ui. Then I'll have a first order derivative equal to 0 on the right boundary just for i max minus 1. The rest of the calculation is the same. Let's go back to the smaller time step. Point zero 0.05, mm, like that. <coughs> and then we run. <coughs> There you see now the right boundary operates quite differently than the left. So the wave sort of uh, flips when he hits to the right. Now of course you could have done the same to the left as well. Instead of this uh, zero that we have here, this one, we could do the same here as well. Copy the inner uh, recipe like that. Remove him and say the new number 2. Then this loop must go from 3. Number 2 equals, say, 2. And he then reads the old one, number 2, and here we will have number three and then not number one anymore because he is the identical to number two. That's all. <laughs> Here I was a little bit quick for these two. They are actually outside the i loop and then I still use i here. You can do it because when this loop is finished, I have my i then equal to i max uh, minus uh, minus one. He goes one above when he's done, but it's not uh, nicely written actually. So here, you should have uh, done it more precise. It should be i max minus one, and here i max minus two. And here, I max minus one. Now it's more correct. <coughs> so now Neumann condition at both ends. I hope. Uh, no. What didn't? What happened now? Mm. Ah. You and you. No, he doesn't work. Why doesn't he? That was strange. <coughs> Ah, well, well, I can have a look at that one in the break. Okay, but <coughs> to sum up, so far the 1D uh, linear wave equation is stable, and yes, he seems to be stable according to the QRA number. And uh, yes, we are able of playing around with Neumann condition and the Dirichlet condition at uh, the ends. So when you have fixed points at the ends, you might think of it as a 
solid rope a string elastic string and then you give him a sort of a disturbance and then that wave will travel propagate back and forth along a, a, a attached uh, string in both ends if you have neumann condition you could more imagine uh, surface waves sort of they will slosh up on the boundary and then fall back again and the wave will return out again into the ocean so uh, that will be more uh, the physical interpretation between Neumann and Dirichlet. Any uh, questions? <coughs> then we take a break.